Hi, this is David Bowman with Zeus of Trout Outfitters. This is a tying instructional video for Bowman's Insane Crane. And what I have there right now is a Togan streamer hook, 3X long, number 4, and a Nymph Head gold tungsten bead, size 3 16 I'll start with Unithread 3.0 black. I'll just go ahead and tie in here. Always lay a good thread base down that way nothing spins on the hook shank later on when you're out fishing. Okay, then I'll take some dark brown metallic embroidery floss. Alright, I'll tie that in on the far side. Take some cream colored embroidery floss. You could use off white, white, anything that's light because these uh, crane fly larvae are kind of a light gray is a good choice too, depending on the water and what those particular crane flies look like. And then I'll put another piece in on my side of the hook get everything cinched down. That piece in the middle is again for building you know a fat robust body like the crane fly larva has. And I'll wind this .025 diameter lead. Quick throw in this medium black wire for ribbing. And then cinch everything down with the thread. I like to do, you know, a turn all the way up and back and then a turn back. Just to make sure that that's down good and solid. If you want, you could throw a little bit of head cement <clears throat> down. That'll kind of lock the, the lead in place. Okay, then I'll take this medium this medium piece of embroidery floss and I'll build a pretty fat robust body here. These crane fly larvae are basically round. So I try to give that profile as best I can. I mean that's kind of the basis behind a lot of a patterns I tie is to try and give the fly the, the same profile in the water as the natural will have a little bit more so than imitating it exactly. And that seems to work well. Alright, so we'll just tie that off. <coughs> lead wire in place here. Throw a half hitch on that way I can get the thread over the bobbin holder without it making too big of a mess. <coughs> okay and then we'll go ahead and weave this fly. Got your top color on the left, bottom color on the right. And it's this first, that first one, you really want to cinch it down good, because if not, it's going to rotate around the hook on you almost every single time. Keep good tension on the floss while you're weaving. Try not to let it get loose. The tighter, the better.
can kind of finagle those knuckles up and down a little. Once you do this enough, you'll see that you can, if you keep the tension on them enough, you can finagle them so that they line up pretty well along the sides of the fly. <laughs> okay, we'll just turn that over. Just trap that thread that way. The weaves don't unwind. <clears throat> then I always just build this up a little, make it even that way because I'm going to be dubbing here so that way the dubbing doesn't slide real bad up front. If you've ever had a, a tapered front like that real bad, you, I'm sure you know that the, the dubbing will slide. And you can see here there's a little bit of spacing between some of my weaves. I can go through and just adjust that a little bit, not a big deal. I'll make sure my lead wire lays into some of those. I mean, so you can see it's dark metallic brown, nice and shiny on the top, cream colored on the bottom. <clears throat> then I'll go ahead and rib it with the black, medium black wire. And again, I'll work that wire through the knuckles on the weave and that really locks this fly into place. All right, it really makes it a rugged fly, pretty, for the most part, indestructible. All right, just get that wire caught. After a couple turns, I like to give my wire a quick little pull. That really locks it, too. All right, so not bad. All right, then I'll take a little dubbing wax, hit the thread, and uh, use a little bit of black antron here. The tips of those, while the crane fly larvae actually aren't bicolored like that, top to bottom, I think it's just a matter of it being a big fat round brown or light colored you know depending on which way it's turning it's kind of looking a little bit like you know a darker crane fly one way a lighter crane fly the other the trout can't make up its mind and so he just grabs it out of the fact that it's a big fat robust fly that looks like a crane fly and then the very heads of these things a lot of times get pretty black right before they're <clears throat> right before they're finishing up so I just throw a little black in there and that you know does a good job of really getting the trout to think that I mean for the most part that this is a big fat crane fly larva coming down and they gotta grab it before it's gone my gold bead does a nice job of attracting the trout. I mean, it's just, you know, like a lot of gold bead patterns. Finish that up tight to the head, rotate the bead so that it's got the right orientation. And this time I have my whip finish tool. And so that's Bowman's Insane Crane. Nice fat European nymphing anchor. Does really good, uh, you know, earlier on in the years, about, you know, you know, late April, May, early June. And uh, the trout really love it. So thanks for watching.